I have been building my cottage garden with medicinal herbs for quite a few years now. And so I'm really excited to bring in a professional herbalist and see what they think of my medicinal herb garden. Today I'm here with Doc Patrick Jones from Homegrown Herbalist, and he's gonna take a look at my cottage garden and see what he thinks. Hey, Doc Jones. Hello. How you doing? I'm good, we're really excited to be here. You have this beautiful, beautiful patch, and I, I'm excited to get in and see who your friends are. <laughs> Sounds good, let's see what you think. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. All I'm right. feeling a little <laughs> nervous, but I'm ready. <laughs> let's get started, I can't wait. First of all, it's so pretty, Carolyn. I mean, it's just a lovely place to be. Just being in here is, it's really so sweet. One of the things that, that I've found in my life is that a lot of the medicinal plants are so beautiful mm. and they're great landscaping. Yeah. You can do really pretty things even if you didn't want the medicine. Everything on your place can be medicinal. Yeah. You got yarrow here, best thing in the world for bleeding and it's a good respiratory herb. We got lavender that's good for calming and insomnia and anxiety and killing about anything. <laughs> <laughs> got some anise and catnip. Catnip is a wonderful herb for little belly aches and babies. It's one of my favorite for, for tummy aches. Yeah. I make like a little glycerite for them yep. and it seems to help babies a lot. <laughs> We've used a lot of that in our life too. I've, I've been told, I don't know if there's any research on it, but I've been told that nursing moms that drink catnip tea that the babies have way less colic. Oh. That the chemicals are getting through the milk, so. Ah. That's fun too. That's a good trick to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the valerian, <laughs> your valerian is so tall, Carolyn. <laughs> I, think, I think it's happy. It's kind of it's, taking over everything. <laughs> it's when I first saw it, I thought it was angelic because it's eight feet tall and it's backlit by the sun, but, but it's not, it's valerian. That's a really phenomenal plant too. So beautiful. And the smell of the flowers is like the most beautiful experience. It's really. a lot better than the smell of the roots, I yes. have to say. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, a lot of pretty girls are like that. They, you know, they're really pretty and they smell nice, but their socks stink. <laughs> and we don't there hold that go. against them. Good thing I'm not wearing any socks. <laughs> yeah, the roots the medicine on that one, but uh, really, really good for insomnia. I use it for pain a lot on people. Oh. Topically, as a tincture. Mm -hmm. I'll soak right in and make a nerve feel oh. better about everything. Oh, that's great to know. Sometimes um, when I get really stressed out by all the kids, uh -huh. I'll take it for that and it just calms me down, makes yeah. me feel happy again. <laughs> yeah, I've used it on folks for really severe panic attack situations. Oh yeah. Just knocks it right out, oh. really helps. Lots of insomnia, people use it. But yeah. Really great plant. Catnip's pretty good for mild insomnia stuff too, it's mm -hmm. sort of calming. And then you've got your hops up there. That is the most fantastic way to grow hops. I love it. Well, we like it because not only does it give us the hops, <clears throat> but it shades the whole front of the house yeah. all summer long. So it actually cools the whole house down too. So it's really serving a couple of purposes, which is really handy. And tell me, <laughs> it's about, really your, nice. tell me about your string system, because that's neat. Yeah, so hops die back all the way to the ground every single year. So if you don't have a way to get the hops down, you end up with dead vines all over mm -hmm. wherever you have it. So what we've done is we've just put little hooks, little cup hooks into the railings and up on the, the roof line up there. And then we just run a, like a hemp twine up and down so that at the end of the season, when they're all done, we go through and we can cut it all and the whole thing can just go right into the compost pile. Wow, it makes just, it really easy to yeah, clean up. That's really, really great. Yeah. Hops is one of my very best friends as an herb. Most people use it for an, gastrointestinal stuff mm. you know it's it's mm -hmm. calming so it's good for belly aches and colic and stuff but it's also got some antibiotic properties oh. so it's good for you know bacterial infections in the gut enteritis and things it's not hard on the good guy bacteria so that's nice yeah you know the thing i've been using it for lately is topically for pain oh really it's amazing topically for pain oh yeah okay and i discovered that completely by accident i had never read it or heard it anywhere and I was trying to remember if humulus has one M or two M's, the genus. Right. So I Googled it and it only has one, by the way, oh. because you're keeping score. Good but to know. <laughs> I saw, you know, on the page I was looking to find how many M's I needed, I saw that it's in the Cannabaceae family, which I knew, but I hadn't thought of for 20 years. 
Yeah. But it's in the same family as cannabis, which is marijuana. Right. There's only two genera in that family, cannabis and humulus, which is these guys. And just as I was writing that, you know, how many M's, I had this horrible pain in my thumb. I'd moved a oh. couch the day before and I rinked a nerve. And I had, as I reached for the pen, I had this screaming pain run up my wrist from this nerve that I tweaked. And, and I thought, why am I not using that for pain? Oh. Right? And so I went back and got a bottle out of the shipping room and, and you know, I'm sloshing tincture on my hand. And my son-in-law comes and says, you know, we got a spray top for those bottles if you want one. <laughs> 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 so I walked over to get the spray top and I'm screwing it on. And I didn't get that top on before that pain was completely gone. Oh, wow. And it was gone. Wow. And it turns out that hops interacts with the same cannabinoid receptors in your nerves and cells that marijuana does, which regulate pain and turn it off. And so it doesn't have any of the THC, which is oh, the, know. you know, the stuff that makes yeah. you high for marijuana, but works as well or better, in my opinion, than CBD oil or, you know, marijuana or anything. And it's not illegal and it grows like a weed. Right. And geez, I why mean, aren't look we at using it. It comes back yeah. every year bigger and stronger than yeah. the year before. So that's a great plant. thing to know. Do you think you could make an oil and make like a salve out of it? Or yeah, would I you think just, you could. Yeah. I like, you know, I like tinctures topically for pain because the alcohol helps the penetration. Right. I mean, it really goes okay. in fast. But even if you just did a hops poultice and ground it up and, and slapped it, right it on, there. it would work. That would work. You know, but that's uh, really good to know. Very neat. You got some spearmint. Here's some calendula. You know, one of the things I love about your garden is you're just letting it do its thing a little, you know, and, and it probably was planned and organized, but they're kind of doing their thing. You know, they're sneaking over here and you got guys over there that probably weren't there last year. Absolutely. And I just, I love that. It, it's sort of a, a natural permaculture-y way mm. to do things. You know, you can either do it this way or you can have little boxy beds everywhere with this yeah. and this and this. And I've done both and do both, but this is just really beautiful. There's nothing wrong with a calendula plant popping up somewhere you don't expect him because you can harvest him there too. Right, and they're matter. absolutely beautiful and so the pollinators cute. love them. And yep. I just love it because most of the things here are either perennials now or they're well self-sown. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're doing their own thing and I don't need to plant anything in the spring out here, which yep. is just what I want. Yep, and that, that's <laughs> one of the very nicest things about medicinal plants is most of them are pernicious weeds. Yeah. <laughs> Calendula, the flower is the medicine, of course, and it's a great, great medicine. If I only had five plants, that would probably be on my list. That's a really so good for so many things. Yeah. The good antibiotic, it's got some antiviral properties, anti-inflammatory, it accelerates healing like comfrey does, not quite as fast, but pretty good. I love how safe it is because yeah. it's really a family friendly plant. Yep. And I, so I find myself grabbing for calendula often for yep. our family. And the only time to be concerned at all is you don't want to take it during pregnancy hmm. but uh, or lactation. But otherwise, it's really safe, yeah. even for little people. Yeah. Yep. Good. Really good. This is another favorite of mine, Ella Campaign. The Roots, the Medicine, really a great plant. It's a really good expectorant. It's like the best expectorant in the world, I think, for getting goobers out of your lungs. Hmm. It's also a good wormer. <laughs> Very common for plants that are good expectorants to also be good wormers because they're breaking up mucus. Yeah. Right? That would make sense. So they break yeah. up the mucus in your gut and out oh. they go. It's the same principle. Sort of a one trick pony, but it's a good trick in lots of places. It's also one of the best things in the world for feeding your bugs in your gut. It's got an insoluble fiber in it called inulin. Mm -hmm. In fact, the genus of this plant is inula. That's where inulin was named after. Okay. So this is the poster child for insoluble fiber that's good for your gut bacteria as a prebiotic uh -huh. booster for the bugs in your gut. It's really amazing. That's really good. And I, they're cute. The smell of the roots is very interesting. When you work with them too, it's like a strongly aromatic wood. I actually this year tried canding the Ella Campaign roots because I heard that Julius Caesar's oh. daughter, it was her favorite candy. And I thought, oh, what a better way to get the kids to take it <laughs> when they're sick is if it's candied. Oh, they won't even touch it. <laughs> it's is that like right? <laughs> sucking on aromatic wood. Now the cough, the syrup that I made for them, they like that, and they'll take that. Go. But the, the candy, <laughs> nah, not stay so away much. From that one. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got lemon balm here. That's another mint. Really a great plant. The mints seem to have a family mission statement that we're the mint family, and we want to do something nice for your nervous system, and we want to kill somebody. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are calming for the nervous system. Most of them are sedating and calming and nice. 
and lemon balm certainly is good for that sort of thing, insomnia, anxiety. It's also really good for bipolar, especially if you mix it with St. John's. Or oh, the yeah. two together, for some people, is changes everything. Hmm. Not everybody, but some people. But the guy he likes to kill is herpes virus. Oh, okay. So it's really good for uh, cold sores as a herpes virus, shingles as a herpes virus. You know, you can use it topically and internally for that, and it works really good. Oh, wow, that's good. Really fun. And it just smells wonderful. It smells so good. <laughs> I love mm. lemon balm. Mm -hmm. and you got some Minardi here. That's another mint. This one they usually call bergamot, which is funny because there's another herb called bergamot, the essential oil, that comes from like a citrus fruit in right. Malaysia or somewhere. So <laughs> yeah. Another important take home message is when you're doing a search on the internet for something, use the Latin name. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know, there's 30 plants called Indian, Indian tobacco, depending on what county you live in, you know? <laughs> yeah, the mint, it's another mint. And so it, it likes to kill things too. And it's Particularly, this one particularly is good for fungal stuff, and hmm. yeasts and things, or athlete's foot, any of that kind of stuff. So but every year also... we make a lot of salve. Out of this, we make a bag balm, essentially for the cow. Uh -huh. And we have this, we put in some cleavers and some calendula with oh, it fantastic. too. Oh, fantastic. And yeah. it just has worked so well for her and yep. helped keep all the fungal and yep. you know different pieces. Yeah, you got all your skin. bases covered with that. Yeah. It's also good for respiratory things. Okay. It helps, it's got some antiviral properties and helps with expectoration and things. Well, the hollyhocks are lovely. <laughs> they're having a happy day. Yes, they're very happy this year. <laughs> <laughs> I love, we use those for all, kinds all sorts of, flavors. of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we like using these uh, for marshmallow. Anything we'd use for marshmallow, we yep. just pull the hollyhocks for. Yep. And then we like the sunflowers. I usually use these for cosmetic things, for uh -huh. like putting for hair stuff. It makes your hair shiny. Yeah. So yeah. we use a lot of the petals for that. Fun. Yeah. They're also wonderful for attracting little beautiful goldfinches and things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the hollyhock and the marshmallow and the mallow, which is Malva neglecta, all three of those are in the same family and they have the same properties. Mm. The only disadvantage to hollyhock is it's a biennial. Mm. So if you want the root, you want to get it, you know, early and before it shoots up to flower the second year yeah. or late in the first year. But uh, the other two are perennial so that it doesn't matter when you get the root as much. They're full of that mucilage, that slimy, wonderful, soothing stuff that fixes about anything wrong with a mucus membrane. <laughs> you know, anything in your guts or sore throats or bladder infections, bladder inflammation, really great for that. The thing that I like them for that's magic is for reversing the early stages of gangrene. Oh. Wow. Super important. That's really powerful. And I'll powerful. get, you know, dogs that come into the vet clinic and, you know, they got bit by some other dog a week ago and mom waited three days to see what would happen. And, you know, finally I get the dog. <laughs> and they're yeah. starting to get that line where Ooh. everything's going to die and fall off. Yeah. If I get hollyhock or marshmallow or mallow on that wound topically and in them internally, I've never once not had that line gone in 12 hours. Wow. Never once. Wow. I use it on rattlesnake bites for the same reason, because the principal function of rattlesnake venom and brown recluse venom okay. uh, and hobo spider venom, they're all the same. They have an enzyme called hyaluronidase that actually dissolves the glue that holds your cells together. Ooh. Because uh, spiders don't eat things, they drink things, right? They liquefy it and then they right. drink it through a straw. And marshmallow, there's something about it that and hollyhock, and they can just go in and talk tissue out of dying. Uh, it's amazing. Wow. Well, that's a yeah. good one to have. It's a really good one to have, and it's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty. Nobody complains about hollyhocks. Yep. So I see you have some echinacea back here, too. And that's uh, purple coneflower, obviously. Mm -hmm. You can use black-eyed Susan the same way. Most people, it seems like in North America, we're a little obsessed with the root, and we only want the root. But I find the flower to be just as effective for all the immune boosting stuff. Okay. And that's what most people take it for. It's particularly good, in my experience, for bacterial infections. Oh. That's where okay. it's really a rock star. But, you know, everybody takes it when they have a cold, yeah. and it helps that. But if you have a bacterial infection, it's really amazing. Okay. But the thing that I use it for, and I get fussy about wanting the root, is rattlesnake bites. Ah. Uh -huh. Because it also, you know, we talked about the marshmallow talking the cells out of dying, which right. is a good idea. But what the echinacea does, it actually neutralizes that enzyme in the venom that dissolves the hyaluronic acid that's the glue that holds your cells together. It wow. actually neutralizes that enzyme and shuts it down. And wherever you start the echinacea, 
that's where the tissue loss stops. Oh. Every time. Okay. And I've done it over and over in the practice. I get a lot of dogs, rattlesnake bites. I don't ever get them in the people practice, in the nature path practice. No. For some reason, when they hear that noise, they don't stick their head under the bush and say, not why usually. are you making that noise? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> it's always a Labrador. It's always on his nose. <laughs> that echinacea root stops that tissue destruction, and it stimulates hyaluronic produ acid production. Okay. So not only does it, you know, stop it from dissolving the mortar holding your house together, but it puts more mortar in. You know, so it's amazing. Oh, it's good an for amazing combination. Yeah, very handy for a rattlesnake bite. Yeah. Or a hobo bite, or a. Or a so we brown just make a tincture bite. of the two together, or yeah. just take a and, and mallow tincture. It doesn't matter hardly at all how we get herbs into our body. It really doesn't. You could make a poultice. Uh huh. You could, could make really a tincture of okay. them all. I have a formula called Venom and Sting that's mm -hmm. got marshmallow, echinacea, and plantain and dandelion root. Okay. Okay. So marshmallows keeping the tissue from dying. Echinacea is turning the venom off. Plantain's pulling toxins out of the body. Right. And dandelion root is eliminating all the garbage that is building up from all that. Right. You know, by stimulating the liver and kidneys. I put it on topically the first day, you know, every couple hours. Yeah. And then I have them take it internally too. It's also good for cartilage injury because for the same reason. So if you got a, you know, a rotator cuff or a knee thing or something cartilagey that's uh -huh. mad, echinacea can help heal that and re rebuild that cartilage. That's amazing. Okay, so you've seen the cottage garden. <laughs> I have. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think, do you think I, it counts as a medicinal I, herbal garden? I would give this an A plus, no question. Oh, wow. You have so many things here that can be applied to so many issues. And it's so beautiful and so sweet and I, I just love it. And this is what, three years old? Is that what uh, we're I think thinking? this is the third year. Yeah, yeah. and look at, look at the growth you have and yeah. the production you have. This little patch, how big is this? I, I do not know, it's but not it's very not big. very big. <laughs> it's not very big. And in this little patch, you know, you're producing way more medicine than your family would probably need for yeah, a year. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's an abundance of medicine here. Yeah. And, and you have so many bases covered for everything from gastrointestinal stuff to infectious disease stuff to wound stuff to pain and, you know, nervous system stuff. I mean, I don't see anything here that you're missing really. I mean, it's a fantastic garden. Well, that means a lot. That has a really <laughs> big recommendation. And you guys, just like Doc Jones is saying, this isn't a big space and we have a lot out here. So be encouraged. You can do a lot in a very little bit of land. You can provide food, you can provide medicine, flowers, food for pollinators. You can do a ton in a very, very little bit of space with just a little bit of work and a little creativity. Hey, if you want to check out how we started the cottage garden, check out this video here and make sure you go check out Doc Jones on his channel over at Homegrown Herbalist.